Well, welcome to Stories of Glory. Amen. We're talking about from meth to ministry. I'm here with Apostle Rudy Sanchez, and he's going to share some powerful stories. Amen. Um, Jeffrey, this journey into, into ministry started way back in about 1995. Mm -hmm. um, most people don't like to say this, but because we, I, we don't believe that God forced us into salvation, but God sure cornered me when the time of <laughs> salvation came. And I was the kind of rebel, I fought it. Because uh, I had a family that was saved for many, many years. I had a father that was already in ministry and uh, going into the jails and the prisons, doing praise and worship for them, mm -hmm. bringing salvation to many people. And he had a rebellious son on drugs. Mm -hmm. But him, my mom and dad, they were, they were believers of the glory of God. Mm -hmm. And uh, they would constantly pray. They stayed in constant prayer. I would come home drunk and my mom would be sitting up praying Come that on. I would get home safe. Man, I feel the Holy Ghost. <laughs> I just, those stories of prayer that are in my life are amazing, you guys. And uh, I would stay out all night, come home at, you know, six o'clock in the morning. And my mom is in the living room praying in tongues, waiting <laughs> for me to get home. And one night in particular, just as it all started to fall apart um, when I was uh, 33 years old, um, my sister got... A word from God that I needed salvation. Your she sister was, was saved. She was saved. So and she was already goes. moving into prophetic and signs and wonders and miracles. And I had no idea what that was. <laughs> and she calls me one day and she says, Rudy, um, God put something on my heart. I need to come pray for you. And I said, oh, okay. And she won, won this first particular time she came and I let her in. And, you know, I knew what prayer was because I grew up around it. But yeah. uh, I, was, I was addicted at this time for seven years. To smoking methamphetamine mm. and my life was sp spiraling down and I was wondering what was going on because I was like a social addict and I was able to keep a good job and keep my family well taken care of at the same time pay my bills but now mm. it was starting to really uh, wear me out and I wasn't as social I was pretty addicted and my finances I lost my job and my sister says God told me to come pray for you and I'm like okay I was open to prayer at that time right mm. And so she came down to my house in Ceres, California, all the way from San Jose, which is a good two hour drive, right? And she came and she said, uh, God told me to pray for you. And I said, okay, and she prayed for me and I wasn't sure what was gonna happen, but she began to pray for me, put her hand on my head. And, <laughs> and, and within a minute I was broken, crying, snots oh. all over, the glory of God was falling upon me, but she didn't understand the addiction. Mm. She didn't understand that when she left the, the um, the, the, the withdrawals were gonna be there and I was gonna fight those things. And in that condition that I was, I was more afraid of the withdrawal than anything else in my life at that time. Did you wanna give it up? I, at that point, yes, I had wanted to give it up. I began to wanna give it up. Matter of fact, I used to do meth on the way to work because I lived in Ceres, driving mm -hmm. to San Jose, I commuted. I used to stop at places and do meth just to curb the, uh, the, the withdrawal. And I remember crying a couple of times going to say, my, I want to quit. I knew how to pray. I knew about prayer. I probably, I didn't know about it, but I knew prayer worked. Yeah. Because I grew you saw up it modeled. Yes. I saw it in my family and I would cry and say, God, I need to get out of this thing. I didn't know I was already crying out for my mm -hmm. deliverance. Right. Cool. And I would, I would cry and say, man, I can't live like this no more. How did I, I would think to myself, how did I allow myself to get to this place that now I'm pulled over on the side of a road smoking some methamphetamine to, 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 to keep my withdrawals at bay. But I would cry and say, God, get me out of this thing. I didn't know I was even praying, mm -hmm. right? And so my sister's at my house in this one particular summer in 1995, and uh, uh, she begins to pray for me. I get broken in the presence of God. I love the presence of God at that moment, but I was caught up in, in the addiction. She would leave, I, she would make me flush my bag down the toilet, and amen, and, <laughs> you know, the couple hours after she left, I'd go get more because of the addiction. Mm -hmm. And that She's happened, a cycle. yes, that happened a couple of times. Mm -hmm. And then one night, the glory of God really began to show itself to me. And, and Jesus began to reveal how really, real he was. Because a week before my sister had come, she had prayed for me, I flushed down the toilet, the, drink, the drugs down the toilet again, like the second time she had come to pray for me. And the next day she called me, she said, Rudy, God told me I need to come back. And I'm like, for what? And she said, because you went back to drugs again. Oh. And now I'm starting to go, hmm, how did you know that? Mm. How did you know that last night I went and got more? 
right? Wow. And so started to, I started to get a little sense of the fear of the Lord. Like, but I told her, what kind of God do you serve, man? That he's a snitch. <laughs> Why would he be telling you on me? You didn't know anything about the prophetic. Did nothing about the <laughs> prophetic. I thought it was strange. I thought she was a weirdo. So I said, well, I, she'll remember this if you ask her. Yeah. I said, what kind of God is this God that's going to snitch on me like this? <laughs> and she just said, he's the one who wants you to stop because he wants to give you your life back. Come on. So this particular day, she says, I'm coming on a Saturday morning. This was probably now, Jeffrey, in April of 1996. She worked on me for months. Mm. She chased me around. I was her personal assignment. And she was not going to quit. If you ever got somebody that's got a personal assignment on you, you're done. <laughs> they're going to pray and God has given them a promise and you're going to serve God. You might as well surrender. Yeah. So in, in about April of 1996, she calls me on a Friday. She says, Rudy, you're, you're just a mess. God keeps telling me to come pray for you. <laughs> Tomorrow I'm coming to pray for you. Yeah. And I said, okay, this is a Friday afternoon. That Saturday morning, I jumped in my truck when I knew she just shouldn't have been there because she told me I'm leaving at 8 o'clock in the morning from San Jose. I'll be at your house at 10 o'clock and I'm going to pray for you again and, and God's going to do something amazing. You know what I did? I got in my truck that day and I, my wife and kids were out of, at, at her mom's that particular day uh -huh. and I got in my truck and I took off all day. Mm. I did not come home till 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And you know what I did? I circled around my block to make sure her car wasn't there. <laughs> because I didn't want her to pray. I knew it was going to happen. She was going to cry. She was going to throw my drugs away. And it's like, whatever. Wow. So so you knew the cycle. Yeah, I already knew it. But I still... In and you were in, encountering the presence of God. Yes. But you weren't getting totally free. I wasn't getting totally free. Mm. Because there was still a physical addiction to it. Mm. And I was, and inside I was personally afraid of facing the addiction. Mm, that's the key there. Okay? I knew what I was going to face. And I, did, I didn't want to do that. This particular Saturday that I'm talking about, I'm gone all day. I come home at four. I drive around my block. She's not there. I get my truck. I hide it in the garage. Close the garage door. <laughs> right? Yeah. And Jeffrey, this is the God honest truth. I'm sitting in there watching TV for 10 minutes. And I hear her car, a little Firebird that she used to drive that had pipes. And I'm like, it can't be. And I got up to look out the, the Venetian blinds of my little window on the side of the door. And I looked and there's the front end of her car. <laughs> the next thing I do is I hear her little feet walking up in her shoes. Tick, 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 tick. And I'm like, I'm going to go sit down at this heavy uh, screen door. And I locked it and I went and sat down. I was rude, <laughs> right? And she knocks on the door. Hey, brother, I'm here. Sorry, I got delayed. I just got here. And I'm like, wow. Oh, no. You can't. I, I feel the Holy Ghost just telling me the story. <laughs> Anyways, she, I leave her standing at the door for a few minutes, Jeffrey. <laughs> right? And she says, um, can I come in? Yeah. Can I come in? And she's, I said, you can come in, but please. I don't want you to talk to me about Jesus. Mm. And she stood quiet at the door for a minute. And she said, okay. And I let her in. Okay. <laughs> she tells me, I brought a shoebox with me. Okay. First, first, let me say this. We have this 20 minute conversation and she says, well, I better go. I better go home. And I said, okay, since you're leaving, sure. amen. And she goes, before I go, can I pray with you one more time? Mm. And I said, since you're leaving, and she's praying with me, snots all over the floor, it's happening again. She says, Rudy, I brought a shoebox, and God told me to put all your drugs and all your paraphernalia in this Come box, on. right? And I looked at her and I said, Tina, I have 11 ounces of methamphetamine in this house right now. I can't put it in there for you to throw it away. I have to go give this back. She said, you need to go do what you got to do before I go home. Mm. And at this point, it went from, I didn't even want you to talk to me about Jesus to now, maybe today is the day that something mm. incredible and miraculous happens in my life. We go in my, I go and I take 11 ounces back to my drug dealer. This amazing, the drug dealer account closed. He said, Rudy, you don't owe me nothing. I don't owe you nothing. Just don't come back Ooh. looking for more. When, 
when you're withdrawing. Because Meth doesn't have a return policy. No, no. <laughs> they, sure they, I owed him. They don't take it back. <laughs> I owed him. But because he was a friend of mine, he mm -hmm. made the deal, closed it. His, his, uh, I can't remember his name right now. But he cut the ties. He cut the ties. Okay, I don't want anything from him. I don't want any. You don't know me. I don't know you. But I'm not going to give you nothing when you come back. Because I had to tell him. They're praying for me at the house. Right? And he got scared. He's, yeah, he's like, oh, The drug okay. dealer's like, yeah. well, they're praying. Okay, well. He's praying. I'm getting prayer at home. I got to give you this back. I can't do this. I'm going to give my life to Jesus. He's like, what? Come on. I'm you're like, evangelizing. Yeah. And then he though. says this on the way out. He says, don't come back when you're withdrawn because I won't give you none. Because mm -hmm. I'm going to honor what you're telling me. Wow. Right? And I'm like, wow. I went back to my sister. I said, we're done. I think closed. And she goes, good. Let's go in the garage. And I'm mm -hmm. like, you want to go to my garage? She mm -hmm. goes, yeah. And I'm like, because that's where I know all that I have. I still have marijuana. I still have little baggies. Not, mm -hmm. not a lot, but I still had some. Mm -hmm. So watch this. It's amazing. She opens this shoebox, and I put in glass pipes. I put in scales. I put in tutors, plastic baggies, <laughs> marijuana stuff. And I, she goes, okay, here's where the glory of God really starts hitting. She says, let's pray. Mm -hmm. If that's everything, let's pray. And she began to pray, Father, I pray that this is everything. And she would stop and look at me, and she'd go, Rudy, there's more stuff. Wow. And I'm like, whoa, man, now I'm starting to get this, ooh, this is kind of creepy. What's going to mean there's more? There's mm. more. She was tapping and in my it. mind, I knew there was still more, right? I went to my wife who was in the house at the dead. You got any dope on you? She goes, yeah. And I go, I need the little bag. And she said, why? So just, she didn't know why. I just, I just need them. So she gave me some little bit that she had. I went in and I threw it out in the box, in the book, in the box. And she goes, okay, if that's it, let's pray. And uh, she said, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that if this is everything, that I'd be released to go home and blah, 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 whatever she was praying. And she looks at me, she goes, Rudy, there's still more, okay? <laughs> and I'm like, wow. I knew I had one more glass pipe hidden in the rafters, full of meth. Wow. And I hadn't put that in there. Mm. I put that in there, Jeffrey. That was the second time. And she said, the third time, let's pray that. And she said, oh, and, and then she went into her prayer and she looked at me straight in the eyes. Yeah. And she's, Rudy, there's more. <laughs> and this time I think I was paralyzed by the presence of God the or by a of fear Lord. of the Lord. And I looked at her and I'm like, I knew mm -hmm. there was one more piece of methamphetamine. And I looked at her and I went like this in my little pocket. And I pulled out one little baggie that had a rock of methamphetamine. And I put that in that bag. Whoop, wow. I feel the Holy Ghost shut tight. So you had to surrender everything. Every, God, was, God was serious with me. It was yeah, over. It was over. It was over. No plan B. No plan B. No plan B. Mm. Here's, here's the crazy thing, Jeffrey. I put that in there. And she begins to pray. She goes, my, my, my assignment is done. I'm like, what do you mean your assignment? <laughs> I didn't understand all that. Right? She goes, I'm going home. I'm going to get rid of this somewhere on the way home. I don't even know what to do. She never told me what she did with it. But there was a shoebox full of meth, marijuana, scales, tutors, razors, glass pipes, plastic pipes. <laughs> all kinds, all of, kinds things. of drug stuff. Okay. Um, the minute she left, that fear hit me. And I was on my feet, hands and feet on the carpet searching for little rocks that had fall off my table. Oh my god. You know, like the little crumbs that fell off the table, you know. Yeah. I was down there searching for the crumbs. Oh my lord. And I couldn't find any. Mm. Right? Desperate. That 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 next week my son is bugging me, Dad. Take me to this play called Heaven's Gates and Hell's Flames. Come on. Twelve years old. Um I understand this thing. She took all that, but the next day I went and bought more. I didn't buy a lot, uh -huh. but I bought more. Just From a different keep, dealer. Yes. <laughs> you couldn't go I back to, to that a different source. dealer. For the next week, I was buying a little bit at a time, little bags, just mm -hmm. to keep this, these withdrawals at bay. Mm -hmm. That following week, actually, on a Thursday, my dad came over to visit me because he lived down the street and around the corner. Uh, he came in and said, why are you? He, to, I, my truck was broken. It was in the garage. He's like, why are you so mad? And I go, I don't know. <laughs> All I know is everybody keeps talking to me about this God. And I'm sick and tired of it. And I had a screwdriver in my hand. And I turned around. I threw it in the different direction that he was standing. And my dad looked at me. And my dad's a 40-year-old veteran in the Lord at this time. 
he looked at me, he lifted up his hands and he said, praise God, you're about to get saved. <laughs> and he Come walked on, out, right? Yeah. And he left me standing there in amazement. Now you're doing it, right? <laughs> my sister had been chasing me. Now my dad's saying it. That next day, that Friday, my son, Rudy, comes home from school and says, Dad, there's a play at a church in Modesto called Heaven's Gates and Hell's Flame. Take me. All that Friday, he bugged me, bugged me, and bugged me. And I said, yes, I'll take you. He's playing tomorrow. No, it's playing on the Friday night. That was take Thursday. Me. Yes. It's playing the next day. It's playing on a Friday night. Mm -hmm. And I finally looked at him and I said, okay, I'll take you. He's all right. You know what he does? He calls my grandpa, Your his dad. grandpa, yeah. my dad. And he tells him, my dad said he's going to take me. And he, my uh -huh. dad, you know, he's, he's old school. When he says he's going to do something, he's going to do it. Okay. Come on. And, and he called me after my son told him I was going to take me. He said, Rudy, I'm going to pick you up. We're all going in my van. Now I know. <laughs> my wife is a witness. She knew. You're stuck. We're going. We're going. There's no getting out of this play now. Right? And that Friday evening, we're on our way to this play. I know it's going to be three or four hours. Mm. I have to smoke methamphetamine. Mm. So I won't withdraw. Matter of fact, I'm in that church. I went into their restroom and I smoked methamphetamine that night. Wow. In a big At the church. church. At the church. Wow. So you were in a desperate place. Yes, I was in my last days. I was in my end times, personally. Wow. wow. Right? If y'all if know what I mean. I was in my first... Yeah, yeah. Desperation. Um, I didn't know what to do. We're sitting in this church, 3,000 people in it. I'm, there's they're long, like 50-foot pews. And me and my wife are sitting there. The play's about to start with my kids here and Ruben at the end. And uh, we start arguing a little bit. Um my wife says, I don't even want to sit with you. I'm going upstairs. And she went up to the balcony with my son, Rudy. <laughs> now I've got, you got to imagine this. This church is packed, okay? This is all the glory of God. Yeah. The church is packed. I've got room for five people on this side of me and four people on this side of me. And there's standing room only and nobody would sit there. And I'm, and I'm under the influence of methamphetamine. I'm tweaking, okay? Wow. I'm tweaking and I'm going, oh my God, they could tell. They could tell. Oh, you're paranoid. Yeah, paranoid. You're tripping. Yeah, yeah. I'm tripping, right? And I wanted to get up and leave, Jesus. but something just kept me there. The Holy Ghost just kept me there. This play starts. It goes in. The first scene is me, a good drug dealer, thinking he's helping people by giving them good deals on drugs. Anyways, at the end of the play, Je Jeffrey, there's an altar call. And... and they, they, don't make, they don't beg anybody. He basically says, if you saw your life in this play, today is the day that your life could change. And I'm thinking that would be great because I saw my life in many of these skits in this play, right? And he does it. He says, come on down if you want to give your life to Jesus. And I'm like, at that moment, there is a battle going on in my mind. Every demon that had attacked my life and attached itself to my life mm -hmm. was trying to keep me in that seat. Mm -hmm. And I would go, I'm going, I'm not going. And then I realized wow. I'm stuck. I can't even move. Mm -hmm. Even if I wanted to, I felt like I was being forced by all these demons to sit there. This is, this is where it gets glorious, you guys. I counted, I told myself, I'm going to count to three. I'm going to get up and I'm going to walk down there. And mm -hmm. I'm one, two, three, and I jumped up. And I just made myself go to the end of the aisle and start walking down towards the altar. This is how good God was, mm -hmm. is that when I got to the end of my the aisle, my wife is walking from upstairs with my son Come on, down Jesus. there to give our life. We met just like this and we walked down there and I gave my life to Jesus that day. Amen. Amen. And, and he said, we say this prayer, Jesus come into my life. I don't even remember what we said exactly, but I'm, it's real simple you know, a two minute prayer and he's releasing everybody to go back to their seat. The hundreds of people got saved that night. Did you feel anything at that moment or was it just a simple prayer? It was a simple prayer and I absolutely felt nothing. <laughs> nobody laid hands on me. Nobody came to talk to me. Nothing. They handed me a little pamphlet that said, go to church, read your Bible and pray. Right? A little, little sheet that big. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It said those three instructions. And anyways... On the way back to the chair, the pastor that was leading the altar call, Jeffrey, he says one thing. He says, hold on. Somebody needs to hear this. Wow. And he says, 
as a sign to your salvation tonight. I feel the Holy Ghost. Shut up. <laughs> he says, somebody is going to, somebody here is going to sleep well mm. as it'll be a sign that you were saved tonight. And I said in my mind, I didn't say it to nobody, I said in my mind, that would be a miracle because I did enough meth already tonight to stay up all night. Wow. And you knew because you, yeah, you, you knew how I much knew. You, you smoked. I'm up all night. I'm, there I'm, was no way. I didn't have to do no more. I was going to be up all night. I was, I was tweaking. Wow. I was, I was on So speed. this pastor got a word of knowledge. Yeah. Called it out. And you, was this, you were thinking that thought and then it, he said it? No, he said it, and I said to myself, that would be a miracle because I already did enough to stay up all oh, night. Oh, okay, so you were responding, you didn't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. Because he tells everybody, stop, stop. And I turn around, look back, somebody's going to sleep well tonight as a sign to your salvation tonight. And I'm like, that would be a miracle if I sleep well. I got mm -hmm. home 10, 30, 11 o'clock that night. By midnight, me and my wife went to bed, and I fell asleep. Here's the miracle. Wow. Here's where it gets amazing. I slept all night. I had meth in my sock because that's how we slept. You didn't want to lose it. Okay. Wow. And that next morning at about eight o'clock, I got up mm. and I didn't even notice anything was different to be honest with you, Jeffrey. And I, I get up and I go to the kitchen. And I get myself a bowl of cornflakes, a big bowl of cornflakes. Number one, that never happens mm -hmm. on a, in a meth attic. You don't mm. eat in the morning. You do meth in the morning, mm. right? I'm sitting at the corner of the table, looking out towards the street, mm. pour uh, cornflakes, pour milk on it, put a ton of sugar back in those days on it. I'm sitting there eating it and it hits me like a ton of bricks that I did not get up mm. and do methamphetamine. Come and on. I slept all night. Wow. And I'm start thinking about this. And this is May 30th, 1996. This is the first time in my life I ever heard the voice of God. And this word that he gave me, gave me that day still rings loud in my life today. He said, Rudy, today you are free if wow. you want to be free. Woo. And I don't know how shut up, okay. I, I feel the presence of God uh, right now. Anybody's watching, man, you yes. need to just let go because God will meet you when you decide, right? Yeah, it's a word. Anyways, I put my head down and I began to weep. Mm. I began to weep. Mm. And I knew from that day I was going to be free. My wife happens to be walking by with a basket of dirty clothes that she's going to throw in the washer. And she looks mm -hmm. at me and she says, what's wrong with you? Mm. And I can remember how hard it was to lift up my head and look at her and say, I don't know. I don't know. You're weak. Shut up, I didn't yeah. know. Wow. All I knew is I heard a voice <laughs> on the inside of me saying, Today you are free if you want to be free. Jesus. Jeffrey, from that day, uh, May 30th, 1996, is the day I stopped doing meth. June 1st, 1996 is the first time in my life that I ever heard the voice of God. Wow. And when bondage wants to come on my life, I remember that word, today you're free. Wow. If you want to be free. Ooh, Jesus. I went from a meth addict one day in church the next day. Saved the next day, I should say, not in church yet. Um, sometime that afternoon, the withdrawals kicked in. Mm. But I finally was not afraid to face those withdrawals. Mm -hmm. I knew something was in me that was giving me the strength to say, you're going to make this. Wow. And for the next 18 days, I was in withdrawal mode. Mm. Somewhere within the next two days, I had this Bible that I had on my, my dresser next to my bed. Mm -hmm. My brother, Prophet Rob, gave it to me. Mm -hmm. I never opened it. It was beautiful. <laughs> it was in a leather case. It's just a paperweight. It's just a paperweight. <laughs> just look good, yeah. right? All I could think of is, you need to open that. You need to open that. And I tried opening it one day, and it didn't make sense. Mm. So all I could think of, this was the Holy Spirit at work, and I didn't even know. I got this idea. I'm going to take this Bible, walk down to my dad's house, and I'm going to ask him to teach me this. Mm. 
Come on. And so I got that thing. I walked down to my dad's house that spring afternoon, and he was pulling weeds in his yard. He was a meticulous gardener kind of guy, and his lawn was perfect all the time. He was on his knees pulling weeds out of the side of his house, and he sees me walking up with a Bible in his my hand. And I said, Dad, let's go make me cry. <laughs> what's up Rudy and I, he's, I said I need you to teach me this word it's the only thing that's going to keep me from going back I know that in my heart mm. you know my dad did he took off those old work gloves stuck his screwdriver in the ground put his hand on my shoulder and said come on let's go in the house mm. let's do a bible study wow Jesus wow and from that day on, for the next year, my dad did Bible studies with me about twice or three times a week. And that's how you overcame. That's how I overcame, by the word of God and a man who believed in his son. Wow. And 18 days later, the withdrawals were gone and I was on my way. Jesus. Three years later, I was starting to preach. Oh, I had no idea I was called into the ministry. But wow. God, for those of you who are listening to me, God's got greater plans in your drug addiction. I went from a meth addict to a minister, not by might, not by power, but by the spirit of the living God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And uh, in a nutshell, yeah, that's my testimony. Wow, that's powerful. I want to just, I feel the spirit of the Lord just saying is if you could just pray, I felt like that was a word that you released. First of all, I want to say thank you for sharing that. It was powerful, powerful. And I think about just wow, what your father was experiencing. Just one day he was pulling weeds, the next day he's getting his prayers met. And yes. I know that was just probably his yes. prayer for years. Yes. You know, and not just for you to just uh, get saved, but to respond to the call. Yeah. And to see you preach one day, which yeah. is, he got to see that and be, before he went yeah. to be with the Lord. Um, I just felt the Lord saying to pray for those that are watching. That word that you got, you're free if you want to. Maybe yeah. there's someone watching, you're 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 bound with addiction, or you have a loved one that's bound with addiction. Maybe you're like your sister. Yeah. You're standing in the gap. Yep. Maybe you could pray for both. Amen. One person needs to stand in the gap and be that bulldog yeah. kind of faith, and just re she was relentless. She was relentless. She was on assignment. Yeah. So maybe there's people watching that have been discouraged on their assignment. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can pray for both. Yeah, I'd love to say this to you. Don't give up on the people that God's put in your heart to, 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 to pray for, to minister to, to love on, and then show them uh, the grace of God, because it takes time. My sister chased me around for a year Come on. before I surrendered, and uh, I, I will never forget what she did for me. When I preach and I talk about this, I always have to honor her because she brought me to the place of my salvation. Mm. And so I want to pray for those of you believe that you're on assignment for those, on, for somebody who's lost, bound, mm. discouraged, yeah. oppressed, depressed, uh, possessed even, <laughs> uh, because they'll, you're, you're on the right track. Don't give up. God's going to do something amazing. So Father, just stretch out your hands and believe. If you believe that you're going to see your prayers answered. I want to agree with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for the endurance to the intercessor, the one that's standing in the gap, the one you've, did, one you've called, handpicked, chosen to pray for somebody and their family, friends, or relatives that's bound to things like addictions and, and, and sexual sins and perversions or whatever it might be. I just declare the fresh anointing to be upon yes. you to not throw in the towel when they shut you down like I did my sister telling her, I don't want you to... You you come in my house, don't talk to me about Jesus. But yet she persisted. So Lord, I just declare, Father God, an endurance to their faith. Father God, because hard people like me need to come to you. And Lord, I just declare, God, that the favor of God hits those intercessors and they get a refreshing. Father, that their faith would not fail them now. In the name of Jesus, I just declare right now, you are going to see the manifestation of God's promise. And the, he is going to answer that prayer for that crazy person you're praying for. In Jesus' name. Amen. I want to thank you guys for watching Stories of Glory with Apostle Rudy Sanchez. Thank that you, was Rudy. an amazing time. Thank you for sharing your heart that and the fun. testimony. Yes. I believe it really impacted so many individuals. Make sure you like and subscribe for more Stories of Glory. God bless you, and we'll see you soon. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jeffrey.